connections between ancient religions and psychedelics, like uh, any of the John Marco Allegro stuff. John Marco Allegro, author of uh, The Sacred Mushroom and the Scroll. Sacred Mushroom and the Cross, where John Marco Allegro alleged that he alleged that the entire Christian religion was essentially a misunderstanding. And it was really all about the consumption of these psychedelic mushrooms and fertility rituals. And that these were all sort of captured in stories and tales and parables. Yeah. The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross. Yeah. Did, you, did you read it? Did I... Joe Rogan is one of the most successful podcasters out there with an influence spreading over 14 million subscribers. And one of the things he has popularized is this idea that the founding of Christianity was nothing more than a mushroom-induced hallucination. This idea is inspired by a book named The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross by John Marco Allegro. Are these ideas correct? Was Christianity nothing more than a psychedelically induced misunderstanding? Let's find out. Now, believe it or not, Allegro was a Dead Sea Scrolls scholar and was actually a friend of a biblical scholar named F.F. F. Bruce. The claims of the book are that Christianity comes from a primitive fertility cult. The mushroom, being the visible form of God on earth, was the object of the cult and was widespread as it was a secret. The Christians were only another one of these sects, and in order to escape Roman and Jewish repression, they invented a history in the form of cryptograms, namely the Gospels, the story of Jesus, son of a virgin, and so on, in order to pass on to their initiates this age-old knowledge. Little by little, the secret was lost and the church was born in its place. The Old Testament already contained this mushroom revelation. Furthermore, Joe Rogan actually says that Allegro's findings were so dangerous to Christianity that the Catholic Church silenced him. When the book was published, the publisher apologized for releasing it and that the book disappeared from the shelves because the Catholic Church worked hard to stop the book and control the narrative. Let's cover these two claims and see what the issues are. Right away, it's worth noting that, to my knowledge, there are no experts who accept Allegro's work. This doesn't mean it's false, but it should raise some red flags. And there are good reasons why Allegro's work has not been accepted. Allegro's argument is based on philology and philological etymology. This begins an issue from the very outset of the argument. Even if Allegro is right about the meaning of the ancient Sumerian words, and experts in Sumerian say he isn't, and even if he is right about the connection between Sumerian and Semitic languages, which experts of both families of languages say he isn't, and even if his symbolic connections between various things in scriptures are legitimate, even though what he's done is created a methodology where anything can mean anything and equal anything, so the likelihood of his connections being valid isn't great, there's a major problem that any modern linguist would immediately recognize. Allegro's theory is based on an etymological fallacy. In other words, he repeatedly assumes that the origins in history and makeup of a word determine its meaning. But modern linguistics have shown that we understand the meaning of words best not by diachronic means, which is tracing the meaning of the word over time, but by synchronic means, seeing how a word is used in the time period you are studying. So even though there's serious reason to doubt the validity of Allegro's reconstruction of the history of words like Christ, the point here is this. The history of the word, even if Allegro was right about it, is completely irrelevant to determining the meaning of the word in first century Koine Greek. As if that's not enough, for the linguistic leaps he makes, there's a reason why nobody accepted these either. Here's an example. The modern French word seps refers to a polydor mushroom, so that means that seps means mushrooms, which probably comes from the Latin sepa, which is onion. And that came from the Amanita muscaria, which is a musimol mushroom that displays sedative, hypnotic, depressant, and hallucinogenic psychoactivity. 
He then points to Sifas in Aramaic and argues it has the same meaning. Not only that, but Petra doesn't actually mean rock, but is actually another mushroom, because there is a Semitic name for mushroom, Petra. But this just adds on more fallacious reasoning to the case via an association fallacy. In other places, he asserts that the Hebrew word Kotareth means mushroom rather than the root Qatar or surround. And he avoids any instances where it's clear that it's really not talking about mushrooms. And in order to make this theory more coherent, Allegro has to tack on tons of auxiliary hypotheses which lower the probability of his theory being true. For example, he says the Gospels are written to preserve the names of secret Sumerian mushrooms, but at the same time hide them from plain view. But as we've seen tons of times before, we have a hypothesis that's much stronger in its support, which leads us to our next issue. And that is that there's data that Allegro has to ignore. That is, all the arguments and evidence for what Dr. Lydia McGrew calls the reportage model of the Gospels and their historical reliability. Between all the undesigned coincidences and other confirmations we have of the Gospels, the Gospel authors were trying to present an accurate historical portrayal of the historical Jesus, and they were highly successful. Evidence flows both ways. If evidence favors a hypothesis that contradicts another, then the positive evidence for one hypothesis is also disconfirming evidence for another, and that applies here as well. In other words, all the positive evidence we have for the reportage model of the Gospels is direct evidence against Allegro's hypothesis as well. What about this idea that the Catholic Church covered up Allegro's work? While the Catholic Church is typically one of the go-tos when you want to blame someone, Rogan's claims could not be further from the truth. The reality is that Allegro's work was dismissed and refuted by the academics in his day. The publishing company stopped the publishing of the book and it went out of print. There were 14 prominent British scholars, including his mentor at Oxford, Godfrey Driver, that renounced his work, so much so that the publisher apologized for publishing the book. In a 1970 article in Time, titled Religion, Jesus is a Mushroom, Godfrey is on the record saying this was an essay in fantasy rather than philology which is not based on any philological or other evidence of merit. In conclusion, Jesus was not a mushroom, and the arguments in favor for this are severely flawed and completely contradicted by all the positive evidence we have for the reportage model of the Gospels. And these claims that the Catholic Church tried to cover up Allegro's work because it was so serious is not only contradicted by the evidence, but also contradicted by the scholars who reviewed Allegro's work as well. Hey everybody, Than here. If you're watching this, that means you watched this video all the way through, and that's pretty awesome. If you found a lot of value in this, remember to like and subscribe, share the video as well, and share the channel so we can continue to grow this community. And if you do really find a lot of value in what I'm doing, please consider becoming a patron. All of that is going to help me continue to make these videos, continue to do better work in the future, and that way I can better serve you guys. Thank you again for everything that you're doing. Thank you again for your support. Till next time.